Hello, it's Paula, and today uh, we're in the midst of this COVID-19 uh, crisis in Alberta and everywhere else. And um, the Alberta government has a statistics page with some spatial data on it um, at the Calgary level, but they also provide that local geographic area, which is the Alberta Health Services shape at this finer granularity um, or more detail. So what I've done is for a few days that just sort of noted down the cases and we're going to pick one of those days data and uh, we're going to map and Power BI. So you don't actually have to sign in. Um, if you notice at the top right the sign in is no person and you can use the desktop anyways if you have it loaded. We're going to go get a file and then we'll be doing a shape map in Power BI. To do that, we have to actually go to options and uh, check to see that you have, um, under the preview features, the shape map visual turned on. It's worth checking out Learn More to see what they have to say and if you want to read that detail after you view this video. This is kind of how it looks like. So we're going to have that color shaped polygon map is what we're after. So make sure you turn that on. Hopefully you've downloaded the data entry data from the COVID-19 um, site. And we are going to pick, I think, I don't know. I, I think I've updated this file and um, it might be a different date that we're going to bring the data in. So here comes that file down. We also need that topo JSON to um, fill, to provide the shapes. So we need to download that one as well. So we're going to go come back to Power BI and get that data file, the data entry one. It is an Excel file just because it's um, it's not in an ideal analysis format, but it was easy for me to type data in with. This is the sheet with no fancy name and we're going to load that data. This is our first data file in here, and when it's finished loading, we should see it on the right under fields. Now, those fields aren't ideal. So what we're going to do is actually take the uh, transformation editor or query editor. And um, first of all, why don't we give it a better name? So under properties, just change the name. There's tons of transformations available with Power Query. I just really like it. And um, once the name is finished here, we're going to go and fix the headers. So transform and use the first row as headers. Most of the time this happens automatically. But we changed it and this is great. So the data formats look terrific and I'm going to look at the profiling. I have it on and you'll see here that the frequency it's the frequency of how often the number occurs and it's not the actual distribution. So that's something to be aware of. Still pretty useful. I'm going to bring over one of the dates worth of cases values now, uh, April 17th, and use conditional formatting on it. So we know it's, we're going to do it on the sum and uh, the higher values will get the darker color. So there's something odd there, right? I mean, there's one value taking the whole color. And I remember that, oh yes, I did enter in totals. Um, and so I could filter it out on that visual, but it makes more sense to actually filter it out on the whole page. So I'm selecting everything. And then I'm actually going to get rid of Calgary Zone and Unknown. And there we go. We get that variability in color with the range. So the darker the color, the higher the number of cases. Now we're going to take that shape map. I'm going to move it over. Just grab the actual visual window. Maybe align that guy better. There's certain guides you can use, but I'm, <laughs> I'm just playing it by ear today. And we're going to use the local name for location and do the same case number data, but we see the United States and that's a problem. So this is where the topo JSON file comes in handy. I had brought it down twice. That's why it's listed twice in mine. And there it is. And each polygon of the Alberta Health Services uh, local is filled with or associated with a number and color coded. We're going to bring up the actual site where I 
bring the data in from and it doesn't look too bad right except that you know a different color shade so we we'll, can also change the data colors I'm going to change the colors over to a red um, set of colors and it's not the same but basically I think we have a, a similar idea the gradation will be quite a little bit differently. And I'm just checking the values here that, uh, yep, they seem to be the same ones. So I believe we're good and there's no data entry errors. So I'm going to move that over. And uh, when we do um, a spatial area test, we usually want a ratio or some sort of normalized value there. So I'm going back to the data.world and getting the um, the attribution that came with the Alberta Health Services aggregated file and the population data there. So we can use the 2016 data and um, try to figure out how many cases per population in that area. So we're going to bring in that file once it's down. It's in a CSV, but it was actually contained in the shape file originally. Just have it there handy so that people in Power BI can use the same information as well. We're going to transform the data right off the bat because we really only want that one column of data. So in this case, it found the headers, by the way. Um, we're just going to end up with two columns. I'm going to pick the local name as a join and that population data. The data formats look great. So we're just going to close and apply. And we should see an added data set there. I'm going to check the data model. And they weren't connected because one is called local name and the other called a AHS local name. But we can actually drag across or define relationships. There's more than one way to do that. And everything by default looks great. I just wanted to double click and check that everything was good and show it to you. So we can drag over that population data now into our table. And I am going to repeat the conditional formatting just to see what pattern we get. Pick a purple. Maybe the darkest purple is too dark, but <laughs> oh, and there's blanks in there because of the join. And uh, we'll just get rid of that for that visual. That's fine. So we're getting a different pattern here. You know, um, some are less cases, but in high population areas. And that's what the measure is going to help us with a ratio between um, the cases and the population. So we're going to use the divide um, function because you know it's just a precaution to uh, not divide by zero ever. The program will know what to do. If you're familiar with programming, there's uh, lots of functions like that, similar functions in other languages. And I'm going to take that population data. It doesn't matter they're in two tables. That join is telling it um, how to to how things are related. And there we go. We have the ratio in cases and I'm going to drag it over. And it's a lot of zeros because we know that there's thankfully not very many cases um, for the population. So I'm just going to uh, start at 2, 3 and hike up the decimals. And it looks like 4, 4 will work. Knowing that it's four, I think I'm going to multiply it by a thousand. So it would be how many cases are active per 1,000 people. It's just an easier number to look at. I think the highest is around just over two. But we're going to do the conditional formatting again to check that out or make it easier to see with our eyes. And use a different color just for this. I don't usually have so many colors going, but we're just trying to, we're just experimenting and exploring. 
And there we go. Um, some, you know, some similarities, uh, but also different patterns. And if you look at the very bottom, Calgary West Bow, it has, it's at the very bottom um, from population and from number of cases. But for the ratio, I mean, should it really be at the bottom? I think maybe Calgary Elbow is at the very bottom. But before we do anything with that, we're going to build another uh, chloropleth or shape uh, map. Because I'm actually going to drag that calculation or measure right into it. And uh, there we go. So you get something actually quite similar. But let me just change. I'm going to change the colors on these two, a little bit of magic, and here we go for easier comparison maybe. So if we look at that um, west bow or on the west side of the map, uh, there's a less variation for the ratio. I'm going to just uh, click on the header and sort from largest to smallest on the ratio, and you can see that now, um, hey, elbow is on the bottom, and Calgary West Bow is, uh, you know, near the bottom, but not quite at the bottom. The ratio actually gives us a better comparison and probably a more accurate comparison. So, I mean, what's really, what we can see easily here is, um, again, at the West Bow, how it differs between the two maps. And we're getting a more accurate representation for West Bow which is the parent for this day, where maybe the map on the right is giving it a false highlight.